Hi, welcome to Inside Advertising. We're going to talk about radio today with uh, our guest, Mike Jorgensen. Mike is president of Sundance Broadcasting and one of the most informed men in radio in, in the country. Mike, welcome. Thank you, Bob. You're very kind. Nice to be here. Okay. Mike, with the onslaught of TV, uh, a lot of people thought that radio would be buried, and it's uh, alive and doing very well. Why? Well, you know, it's funny. I think all industries probably have their doomsayers, and uh, radio has gone through a lot of transition. But I think one of the primary reasons that the industry has done as well as it has is that it's simply been reflective of people's lifestyles. More and more women now are in the workforce. In fact, more women are working than men. And because of America's mobility, radio is the only communications medium that has the capability to go where people are. Uh, until they figure out a way that you can read a newspaper or watch television at 60 miles an hour on your way to work, I think radio is going to be very, very healthy. Yeah. I've heard there were like uh, four radios uh, in the average household. Actually, uh, almost six. Is that right? Uh, working radios per yeah. average household. And because of its one-on-one -on -one nature, radio circulation has absolutely kept up with the growth of America. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's especially telling, I think, when you compare what's happened with America's newspapers. Uh, yeah. In almost every case, the circulation is off, costs are up, and yet radio circulation is very, very healthy. Mike, if, if I were an advertising advertiser wanting to use radio, uh, how would I go about it? What should I be looking for? Probably three things, Bob. I would say the first thing would be station selection, and by that I mean the right kind of a radio station that delivers the right kind of life group for you. 25-year-olds uh, come in all shapes and sizes, and you want to make sure that you have the, li the right life group uh, that can purchase the product or service you're trying to advertise. So that's important. And then scheduling, to try to get to that station's particular strengths is also important. And maybe most important of all is the creative product. You've got to have a commercial vehicle that's going to stimulate the consumer yeah. to buy or use that product or service. Is radio really cost-effective? Well, Ted Bates every year does an annual uh, study on uh, the cost-effectiveness of radio versus other uh, major media. And it's the most cost-effective of all the major media, television, newspaper, magazine, direct <laughs> mail. Radio's costs have risen least of all the major media. Hmm, that's very interesting. You know, I go back to the days when uh, coming home from school, I would want to listen to Jack Armstrong or Terry and the Pirates or, or Saturday morning, let's, let's pretend. Is drama ever going to come back to radio? Well, I think some of that's already happening. You know, sound effects are in use uh, to a great extent in radio, and it lets the listener's mind participate. And uh, I think that probably you can make an imprint with sound to a much greater extent than you can with video. A good illustration of that is that the book is always better than the movie. Uh, right. Invariably, you're disappointed at seeing a movie after you've read the book because your mind has had a chance to participate. With radio's greater fragmentation, you're starting to see specialized programming spring up now that's directed strictly at children. Uh, and I think dramatic programming, as radio becomes more and more specialized, will be a part of that, uh, that future. I'm glad to hear that. Mike, uh, what effect, if any, has, has music video had on, on radio, or, or will it have, do you think? Well, inter interestingly, I think uh, music television uh, has had a great impact on creating the awareness and uh, excitement for uh, the so-called contemporary music stations. And in fact, those stations have enjoyed some enormous growth around the country in the last couple of years. MTV has not impacted the time spent with radio as a daily medium. Uh, much like the CB craze or the uh, cassette tape craze that we went through that people thought would have some impact yeah. on radio, circulation figures are still at an all-time high and better than 98% of all America listens to radio every week. That's interesting. How about uh, musical categories? Uh, uh, I mean, how do you categorize music uh, stations, radio stations. Well, that's becoming more diverse too, Bob. In fact, I, I suspect that it won't be too long. If you like to hear Welsh mining songs, they'll be available to you on some radio station. But uh, country music has become more specialized. Certainly contemporary music has become much more fragmented now. And there are as many delineations for a variety of music types as you could possibly imagine. And we see that uh, being furthered as, as time goes by and as radio marketplaces become more and more specialized in, in the particular consumer groups they're trying to target. Mike, thank you very much for being a guest on Inside Advertising. A very good interview. Thank you.